Hey, Dennis. Hey. Hi, Jimmy. Good Saturday. Yes. Uh, I was a little bit rushed to get back home today. <laughs> I went out and I was stuck in traffic, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been? Uh, just in the town. I actually got a new rig for the camera. Uh, so just while everyone's settling in, um, obviously we've got a lot of feedback on the Zooms, obviously being quite long. And so I had a chat with John yesterday and uh, we're thinking of bringing up a list of all the um, interesting points and then making a separate video for them for everybody that would like to find out the information on here. Uh, but uh, yeah, obviously things are pretty full on at the moment. So it's, it's, it's in the works and uh, unfortunately won't be out in, in time with the Zooms, but uh, we'll get out the information eventually. So it's kind of good news. Um, we also realized that uh, not everyone wants to watch a two hour Zoom. Um, some people just want direct information. So we hear you. Uh, we'll hopefully we'll have that, those, uh, that content coming out to you soon. So, um, so today, I guess um, we are going into steaming with the DE1 app, and um, I guess uh, what we are going to look into is some of the features that we um, that we have on the DE1. For example, the uh, flow rate uh, calibration and. We will um, say what we'll explain a little bit on how it's useful, when you can use it, and um, how it affects your milk as well. So, uh, quite a lot to go through today, and um, hopefully, we'll touch upon the three brothers um, today. Um, so, three brothers, if you don't know, uh, I don't know if it's coined it, but I quite like the term. Uh, <laughs> we're calling the three brothers the flat white latte and the cappuccino. And it, Pretty fitting because you know any espresso based menu will more than likely you'll find the three brothers on so um, i think i think that that's the most popular beverages like uh, i would say 70 percent of the customers would point to would order those um uh, the three brothers one of the three brothers yes i would say yeah, yeah. for sure so, yeah it will mostly they are milk drinkers um those who come to cafe i'm not sure about hong kong i'm not sure about your country but in malaysia I would say 70 to 80 percent are milk drinkers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So only 20 are blacks. Okay. I would say it's pretty close to Hong Kong as well. Um, um, I think Hong Kong being quite hot, like Malaysia, a lot of the ice drinks takes on a lot uh, more of the other sort of cooler countries, I would say. Um, and I think we have um, quite a few like uh, iced espresso drinkers or iced Americanos. Um, that's quite a fairly popular drink in Hong Kong as well. Um, yes, yeah, so I would say 75% is all milk based, um, whether it's mm. iced or, or steamed. Mm. Yeah. But uh, even though Malaysia is way hotter, and, uh, but surprisingly, more than half of um, the milk drinkers, the, the milk orders are usually hot. Oh, okay. Which, you know, flat one, the three brothers, or, you know. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. Hot. yeah. Um, based on my experience, um, the, the, the ice drinkers of ice milk drinkers are slightly lesser. Yes. Than yeah. The yeah. Ah. So, but hot still dominates uh, the milk, uh, it, milk it, beverages. Is this like from, I guess, the uh, what's the traditional Malay? Is it Kopi O? Kopi O? Copy yes. things, copy yeah. Hot, uh, copy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, like. Most of us will, most of us will drink hot. But you know, um, if let's say it's too hot, like thirty-seven degrees Celsius weather, thirty-eight sometime, yeah. Then yeah, the 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 ice will spike up, but the dominant of the milk beverages still uh, three brothers. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, still hot, yeah. yeah. It's hot still conquer, yeah. So while we're talking about three brothers, and we'll be we'll be talking about um, um, I guess what defines the three brothers. Uh, we I think we were meant to touch upon it last week, but uh, we kind of went over a few other things instead. But it's quite cool. Um, mm -hmm. So which which drink do you want to start with, um, Dennis? Do you want to start talking about, and we'll we'll just discuss um, our definitions of what 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 a barista will define um, the drink, and uh, I guess what the general public will define. Well, their per perceptions of the drink are. Mm -hmm. 
So um, to me, I, I think that um, different cafes has um, different cafes have their own um, um, definition of latte, flat white, and cappuccino. So uh, some cafes they would serve uh, latte in a bigger cup, let's say eight ounce of cup. Mm -hmm. and flat white and cappuccino, they would serve six ounce of cup. I've seen some examples like that. But to make it simple and make it simpler in terms of definition, I would bring up, I would compare apple to apple, orange to orange. So this cup is the standard of uh, six ounce IKEA cup. Now, um, the definition I would like to explain um, of a latte, a flat white, a cappuccino. Oh, sorry, uh, am I too soft? Am I no, too no, soft? you're okay. You're okay. You're okay, yeah, okay. Good, yeah. Sorry about that, so. Okay, um, to make it simpler, so let's say cappuccino, now, most of people, they will say cappuccino one third, right? The rule okay. of the third. So as simple as this, a rule of third cappuccino, it will be, let's say like this, yeah? I put a marker pen to mark it easier too. So let's say rule of third will be like this. Okay, cappuccino, put a C over here. All right, so let's say, what about a latte? What about cafe latte? So it's very simple. I just put it side by side, I put it side by side. So a latte should be a half of the cappuccino foam. Simple as that, right? So let's say a flat white, it will be again, half of, half of latte, the least foam. So let me bring all out. So this is half, this latte, flat mm -hmm. white, put it here. Put an L, put an F. So this is half of this, half of this, okay. And then there's one more, mm -hmm. cappuccino, which is double the latte, simple as that. So that means this is more foam, a middle foam on the latte and flat white should be the least foam. Simple as that, nothing complicated, mm -hmm. yeah. So some people, when I put this post, when I wrote the book, some people have feedback and then they come, they have feedback, oh, this is not the SCAE way, this is not SCAA way. No, <laughs> I don't think SCAE and SCAA should tell you what kind of drinks you should serve in your cafe. Right? Yeah, this yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah, I don't think so because the, you know, in Tokyo, latte should be 10 ounce, 11 ounce of cup. In Malaysia, let's say I serve 10 ounce, 11 ounce. So many people will complain that the coffee is so milk, too milky, too much of milk. Uh, I see, yes, yes. Right? So yes. it really depends, right? Like in Australia, Melbourne, Sydney, they serve, most of them serve five ounce or six ounce of milk coffee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it, it's not relevant to the SCAE or SCAA. I don't think so. Yeah. But this yeah. is more like the definition of yourself. My definition is six ounce. You could use five ounce, you could use eight ounce, but the difference between these beverages of three brothers should be like this. That's the most simple, simplest way of explanation. That's for me. Yeah, I I I um I completely agree with you, Dennis. It's it's I, I guess uh, um, a lot of people may get tied up in, in the actual size of the drink. Um, like for example, you're saying six, eight, or ten, or maybe even twelve and sixteen. Some people, Twelve, yes, yeah, yes. And and um, I guess where we all find common ground as as baristas is is in the ratios of the foam. Um, the actual milk and the actual coffee. So, so you pretty much touch upon it there. It's, it's like the cappuccino you're saying is a third of it should be a foam. Um, mm. So then the other third is the milk portion and then the other third, the actual uh, coffee espresso itself. So it yeah. doesn't matter what size the cup is, but as long as you've got mm. the ratios um, roughly there, um, mm. you can pretty much call it a cappuccino or a latte or a flat white. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think pretty much everyone is, is in agreement that the flat white is the, the, the least amount of foam. Uh, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, 
it's quite interesting the myths behind the flat white or where it came from and things like that um but yeah. we can sort of agree it came from australia or new zealand australia. uh yeah okay they, they've been fighting each other i know i know, I know. <laughs> um, it's, it's, really funny. it's really funny but um it's a great drink and um whether you like less foam on it or a little bit more foam on it 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 it, it it's 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 personal preference and and as long as the ratios are roughly there um you you know essentially drinking half half milk half half coffee a little bit of foam on top um it's pretty mm -hmm. much say it's a flat white um where, where um i'm interested to see uh would you um in terms of the foam thickness would you, would there be a difference in terms of foam thickness between the cappuccino latte and the flat white yeah of course of course, um, like I mentioned just now, like I explained just now, so the cappuccino should be one, um, one third. Yeah. Right? One third, yeah. So a latte should be half of, half of cappuccino. Yeah. Yeah, slightly like this, yeah. But the taste, um, the foam, we define the taste because the more foam it is, the lesser milk it is. Yeah. The more yeah. foam, the thicker the foam, the lesser milk. When there's lesser milk, that means the coffee tastes even heavier. Yeah. Like um, much more body or some sort. More intense yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 More intense. Yeah. So let's say if let's say a flat white, it should be the mildest coffee among the three brothers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The mildest because have thinnest foam, more milk to mix with the coffee. And and that kind of makes sense with the ratios as well. Like the cappuccino has mm -hmm. the least amount of coffee. Uh, compared to the others and but it has the most amount of foam so, yeah. so the intensity will be similar to a latte but it actually has a little bit less coffee uh, so so it's quite interesting how we're talking about that and on the opposite end of the scale we have flat white it's it's almost half coffee uh, yeah. and the rest is milk and foam so yeah, yeah. so again um, again that the um, um, when I went to Australia, when I went to Sydney uh, for yeah. a month, I was staying there. And um, it, it's quite different when I order a cafe latte. Yeah. It's always the mucus, even though it's five ounces or six ounces of cup. Uh -huh. So sooner or later, I found out it's single shot by default. Right. Okay. So it's so, single shot yeah. by default. Yeah. Right. So okay. yeah, it's different. So for cappuccino and flat white, by default, it's double shot. Yeah, right, right. That's how they define their, their latte and uh, cappuccino and uh, flat white. Right. So they, I guess in Australia, they're, they're less on the coffee to milk ratio, but more just yes. about the foam ratio. Ah, oh, okay. That's pretty cool. Again, cool. again, they, they define that the whole country I went to, like let's say I went to a few cities, Melbourne, Sydney, and Brisbane. Mm -hmm. um, it's always the same latte, single shot, and then flat white is double shot, and yeah. uh, cappuccino is double shot. Uh, and also something something weird um, in Australia, when I order a iced cafe latte, they always give me by default a scoop of vanilla ice cream uh, yeah. in the iced latte, <laughs> in the iced cafe latte. So when I request, hey, I can I do a request? I do not need the vanilla ice cream. So they the barista were giving me a weird face, you know, a weird. <laughs> you know, guy weird man. Why do they? No, you need ice cream and ice coffee. So, so nothing wrong. It's nothing wrong. It's just the how they define their ice coffee latte. How they define on latte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it, it, that's that. Yeah. But it's kind of quite cool how um and and this is what I um love about sort of going to different countries to try different things. It's like their their interpretation of that drink is is you know does well in that region because it matches the flavor preferences or the, the characteristics that they want. And, and that's what I really enjoy about it as well, like exploring and finding everyone's preferences to, you know, the their subtle, subtle differences that make a difference. Um, but yeah, so um, we've got a few questions coming up and um, I can kind of see that uh, Jimmy is pointing out about the single hole and the three hole. Um, we will go through those in a moment. Um, when we when we start to steam some milk and stuff, so we will go through that. Um, Eric is saying um, the lattes and caps uh, where he works is one shot, and the flat white is based on a double shot. Yeah, yeah, um, that's that seemed to be what um, is confirming with Dennis. 
And um, the place where I used to work, we used to pull the latte shots, just the five mLs a bit longer. Um, and that's all. So that was the only difference. And um, I, I guess the, the clientele in Hong Kong just kind of like a little bit of stronger latte. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. It, it, yeah, it, as long as it serves the customer happy, uh, that's the point, right? Yeah, no point that's we right. follow every rules and but then nobody is nobody likes your coffee. That's weird. Mm. So as long as uh, your customers or yourself, you you are satisfied, you love the coffee it is as it is, it's fine. Nothing wrong. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. So um, shall I do some shots? Just to yeah. demonstrate on the, the foam, yeah? Yeah, 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 so yeah. I need to pull some shots and then, uh, then I try to show the difference between the cappuccino mm -hmm. and um, a flat white. So right, okay. The, high, the highest contrast between these two. Sure. Um, first of all, if let's say, if you want to have more foam, that means the steaming part, you need to chirp more. Make more, make more chirping, um, make, make more aeration. Mm -hmm. So, um, that would generate more foam, thicker foam, right? So let's say if I make flat white, probably you have the lowest, or I would say a slightly uh, lesser foam than the rest, um, uh, lesser of the chirping sound. So I will demonstrate how, and then uh, just pay attention when I switch my camera right now, yeah? yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me pull a shot first. Okay. This earphone wire is irritating. Okay. Let me get rid of it. Okay. Let me pull a shot. This is training beans as well. So it's very still. Okay. It's, it's very ugly and it's very still. So, so right now I'm using a um, three holes. Mm -hmm. um, then I will change to single hole later when we explain. I have this as well. Yeah, I have this as well. Okay. All right. Pour in some milk. Again, I'm using fresh milk. Mm -hmm. Some normal whole milk. Yeah. Should I try on cappuccino first? Sure, sure. Okay. So I'm using right now, it's the preset default right now, it's around 160. Okay. Celsius and uh, I believe it's like 0 0.8. Okay. Uh, and, uh... flow, steam flow. Ah, so you're on 0 0.8. Okay. Yeah. So um, if anyone doesn't know or owns a D1, uh, Dennis was just uh, adjusting the uh, flow rate um, in real time at the moment and uh, to the calibration that he's wanting. So he's, he set it as a quite low flow rate at 0 0.8. And um, what that means is it's the is essentially the dryness of the foam, uh, of the steam coming out. Um, so the lower you set it, the less water is incorporated in your milk and um, the creamier and the more concentrated your steam milk will be. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me pour this cappuccino foam. Mm -hmm. So from the look of it, it's pretty much like a, a marshmallow. Yeah, yeah. So I can it see like a marshmallow quite, in the middle. Yeah. Thick. It's quite thick. Okay, let's make a hard shape. All right. So from the look of it, it's mm -hmm. like this. Just memorize this because you can't compare right now. Can't really compare. So this is quite stagnant. It's quite thick and it's quite, uh, how do you call that? Quite mash, marshmallow. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. I, I would say it's like a, like in the G. middle is quite, uh, is, is if you've got a marshmallow in the middle and it can't move, yeah. only the outside. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let me steam another one right now. So I do a flat white. So pay attention on the chirping sound. This time it will be significantly less. Okay. 
porque there's enough. Ah, so very, very little for you. Wow. Very little. Very little. Go all the way to the dryness. 0 0.4 right now. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk through that in a moment, Dennis. When, when You're we... okay. Um, Hard enough. Off it. So how much are you uh, steaming here, Dennis? It's about 150, 170, something like that? Uh, 160. 160. Yeah. So right now, I'll show you the, the milk of the flat white. It's quite it's runny. Mm, runny. Yes. Yeah. So it's less spongy. Yes. You can feel it. It's very silky. Yeah. Very silky. Okay. Let's make a hard shape. Okay, so by comparison, mm. these two, it's quite spongy. Yeah. See? It doesn't move anymore right now. Yeah. It's separated. No move. Yeah. For this, we're running half boy egg. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, just like I like that. Yeah. That's a really good analogy. Half boiled egg. Yes. Yeah. So when it's full boy, the, the whole egg doesn't move anymore. I, I guess you could say around, it right? moves like a jelly, right? Moves more like yeah. a jelly. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like more like a sponge cake, a shape mm. cake. Yeah, it's spongy. Yeah, stagnant. It stays. This is more like half boy egg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. Um, just while we, we uh, were, um, uh, do you still have the milk in your jugs? Um, from oh, okay. The so um, yeah, I have. I noticed that um, when you were steaming the cappuccino foam, that when you swirled it around your jug before you poured. Um, I just noticed like when, when we were trying to describe and, and, and sort of let the users know what we're looking for. Um, like I, I looked at the edge of your jug for the cappuccino one and I just noticed that um, it, it seemed to have like a, almost like a lip, you know, when it kind of okay. sticks to the edge. But with the flat white foam, it, it kind of just collapsed and just, you know, just left a little trail where it was. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it, yeah, it's you normally see the metal thing. underneath. Yeah. Uh, but Definitely. for the cappuccino foam, it was very sticking to the sides. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, correct. Yeah, that's the way it is. So right now, it's not so inaccurate, not so accurate, because right now, a lot of uh, foam already um, pops out, right? I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's already dissolved. A lot of foam already dissolved, because over the time, these small micro bubbles will just dissolve. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, but this is the way it is. Uh, let me grab a spoon. I sure. think right now it's not so accurate as well. Uh, it's been some time sitting there. Let me grab a spoon right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, hi, Ryan. You tuned in late. That's no problem. Um, I, I believe Dennis has got the double XL model and he's using the three hole steam tip. Eric's just got his. Uh, oh, congratulations, Eric. Welcome to the DC family. Eric just got his right. uh, D1 last night, uh, Dennis. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so this should be the flat white. It should be quite thin. Yeah, yeah. So you can yeah. immediately see yeah. the okay. coffee underneath, right? Yeah. Yes. For this, it's thick. I have to submerge uh -huh. down way below. Look at this. Oh, like a Check soft peak. Out, yeah? You know, if you, you have yeah. a bake, Dennis, it's like soft peak <laughs> with the egg whites, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is like uh, softly, softly, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, yeah, soft peak, yeah, soft peak, they call it. Yeah, okay. Ah. So now you get the idea uh, from the look of it. Of course, usually we don't scrap the foam because let's say your friend order a flat white. I order a cappuccino. I look at my friend, whether they do it correctly, let's say flat white. So the way you look at it, you just, just move a little bit, then you know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or, or you can do the, uh, the pokey test, Dennis. You ever do the pokey test? Where you uh -huh. poke the cup? Your finger? Yeah, with oh, your finger okay. and you see if it pulls out, you know? You poke it gently. Oh. <laughs> like this way? Like yeah, this yeah. Way? So you just poke it, yeah. Uh, uh, you can oh, do it quite yeah. hard, you know? <laughs> but yeah, oh, yeah. Man. That's cool. That's the thing. That's cool. Yeah, so that, that, that's how I do cappuccino. That's how I do flat white. So basically, um, I will put everything very similar, the coffee recipe, very similar. Um, but the only thing different is when we steam the milk, 
we still with extra chirping sound for cappuccino, um, least chirping sound for flat white. So right in the middle is just latte. So John, John would oh John John last time told me that he would use the decent jug with the indication to do the marking. So when yes. during the steaming time, he he would know that how much thickness on the marking. Yeah. Would tell what kind of foam is enough. What kind of foam is for a flat white. I think that's a really cool um, detail that he's noticed. Um, obviously, he 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 has used a, a marker um, for for himself to kind of uh, gauge how much uh, uh, air he's oh, yeah. in. And um, I, I don't think I've had enough experience steaming the milk at the moment to, to utilize that. And I think it's complex more with the, the changing of the flow rates. Um, so um, I don't know if you noticed, like when you when you have it more powerful, um, obviously mm -hmm. it climbs up the wall of your jug a little bit more. So I haven't yeah. had that um, repetition of how much my milk is 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 expanding in the jug to to gauge that. But I think if if you did keep an eye out for that, it would be a really useful detail to use uh, as John is using to to see how much foam he's getting in. Um, yeah. um, I I learned through my way from the experience. Mm. I always scrap uh, for my own drinks. I always scrap off the foam just to check when I was learning. I always check once I'm done. Okay, I just scrape off um, the foam on top just to see whether is this correct. I wanted to do a cappuccino. Is this really a cappuccino? Just to verify. So, so you, I guess you were using a spoon in conjunction with with your with your workflow at, at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah, just for my own consumption. If let's uh -huh. say my own coffee, I would do that. That's very uh, interesting. At the beginning, yeah, uh, yeah. It was like there were seven years, seven, six years, seven, eight yeah. years ago. Yeah. Um, I, 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 you, you know, I, I never used powdered jugs for many years and, and I used a spoon. Mm -hmm. So and that's exactly the way I used to check it. You know, uh, I used to mm -hmm. groom the top um, and, and essentially just, uh, I used to tap it on my drip tray uh, mm -hmm. and see and see how thick the foam was. And, and you know, you can really gauge what, what the quality of foam is. Is it thick like cappuccino mm -hmm. or, you know, runny like a flat white? Um, mm -hmm. Perhaps we can do that a bit later, Dennis, um, when we're steaming yeah. milks, we can just groom the top and, and, and see the top layer of the foam. Um, yeah. And I think it's a really good technique for new people coming to milk, um, just grooming the top and it gets rid of that, you know, those, those smaller bubbles that are not quite gone into micro bubbles and, and, and it yeah. gives you a better foundation to sort of start pouring from. Um, but before we forget, um, I just want to go through uh, what I saw when you were steaming the milk. So I don't know okay. if anyone else noticed, um, but um, as, as Dennis was steaming, um, he yeah. was changing the flow rate on his, um, on his D1 app um, while he was steaming his milk. Um, so co correct me if I'm wrong, Dennis, but I think you, yeah. you set it to a faster flow rate at the start and then yeah. uh, moved on to the slower flow rates towards the end. So if That's you could correct. just give some insight on, on why you did that and, and how you find it beneficial. Um, now, I, I learned through um, my experience on teaching that I've been teaching with uh, different types of machines heat exchanger, dual boiler, multi-boilers machine. And each machine, they behave differently in terms of steam quality. Yes, yeah. So some machine has super wet. Like if, let's say you turn on the steam into your palm, <laughs> it's almost, you can just wash it, you know, yeah. wash your hand with those. So, so wet, it almost feel like it's showering in a hot mist. Yeah, yeah. So for some, um, for some steam one, it's super dry, very dry. Yeah, boiler machine, I'm talking about traditional boiler machine. Yes. So the driest so far is decent. So I learned through the importance of dryness in the foam mm -hmm. uh, through experience. And uh, so I, like I mentioned just now, I use some machine um, so wet and so soak up the steam quality that the consequence is, let's say it's too, too wet, I can't even pour a latte out. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the milk, the milk just separate the moment I stop the steaming. That's very correct. I can barely pour a hard shape from extremely wet steam quality. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. So that's my experience. 
So let's say, let's say the drier it is of the steam quality. Um, that's why there are some brands that always emphasize, emphasize on uh, uh, our, our steam quality is super dry. You put your hand over here for five seconds, your palm doesn't feel any wetness of it. So that's why they always emphasize on the, dry, uh, the dryness of the steam. So the dryness of the steam um, will make the milk super silky. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And the taste even better. <clears throat> super silky, very silky milk texture. That means it's very easy to pour latte out. Mm. Yeah. And nice, uh, aesthetic wise, super good, you know, and uh, 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 whatever you pour, the, the the milk will follow your instruction. Basically, yes. that's it. Um, yeah. I, I don't know whether it was the feature at the time or whether um, I, I think I lost my touch doing a lot of latte art. Um, I, I almost didn't steam milk for a year. Uh, and then I, I was still, you know, out of practice. And I don't know whether it was the feature coming in and I was dry, still steaming milk with drier steam and then something clicked. Um, and I, and I kind of believe it was the drier steam and, and the quality mm -hmm. of the milk coming out that made it a lot easier. Um, and, um, at that point I was, you know, we were doing some live zooms and I think I picked up a few pointers and then it, it just kind of, uh, accelerated from there. But what I want to add to this, I don't want to take anything away from you. What I want to add to this is mm -hmm. that the better that you steam your milk, um, <clears throat> the more, um, enjoyable learning latte art is. Because I think yeah. that's, that's the, the main thing is people want to keep doing the pattern straight away, right? Uh, but yeah. they don't realize that the quality of their milk is, is super important. Uh, yeah. And I think you touched it on uh, perfectly there. It, it, the milk will do what you want it to do when the milk is right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. We, yeah. The good texture of milk, we are looking at uh, the obediency mm. of the milk, right? It follows you, you know. If, let's say, I tried, let's say, super wet, of uh, uh, steam quality. So it, it does not, it's, it's just like the old dog, you know, doesn't learn new trick, whatever you tell the old dog, doesn't, it doesn't behave. Mm -hmm. Just like that, it feels like that. So yeah. that's why uh, just now Christian also uh, mentioned that uh, silky milk, it's you know, better mouthfeel. Yes, absolutely. As well as uh, better latte art. So in some way, a good latte art, good steaming texture will um, uh, affect on the, taste preference as well, the taste of it, mm. of the coffee as well. So that's why uh, just now what I did, I was starting off at 1.2, 0 0.8 mil per second, okay. just to have enough power to swirl, to make it spin, make the milk spin. In the meantime, I was aerating, making chirping mm -hmm. sound. Once it's done, I would like to swirl the milk, like it's, it's, it's swirling. Yes. But I would like to submerge the steam tip in underneath just a little bit. That's the time that I, that I turn my um, flow rate into the minimum, like mm -hmm. 0 0.4. Right, okay. So yeah. by that, to me, I get the maximum dryness from this machine. So mm -hmm. That's why I turn, I started off just a little bit, uh, 1.2, 0 0.8, then I, uh, along the way when I was soaring, I just move it back into, turn it down into 0 0.4 mil flow rate. Right, okay. So that way I feel like it's the maximum dryness to me. Mm -hmm. Maximum dryness, yeah. Right, that's really cool. And um, uh, I, I guess it's, it's you're, you're really fine tuning your stages of steaming uh, by you know, getting that uh, swirl to speed as quick as possible. Uh, yeah. I, I guess the reason for that is is you know to to aerate the milk and then uh, mm. to find how to say uh, maximize the time where you're texturizing yeah. your milk. Uh, yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, but it, it's it's um uh, it's slightly longer. It could be just 21, 22 seconds, uh -huh. 22, 20 to twenty two seconds depends. Right. But I get maximum dryness from the milk. Yes, from the steam. Yeah. Maximum dryness. In compare, I started off 1.5, then the whole thing would last, let's say, the whole steaming, the whole, the whole frothing process would last, let's say, 15 seconds. But it's not as dry as what I did just now, 22 seconds or 21 seconds. Okay. okay. Does it feel that way? Yeah. So that, that way, 
um, I made a lot of coffee for my students. I made a lot of coffee for my friends. Yes. They all taste, they all also, one thing very, very common, they will say that, oh, how come your milk so smooth? <laughs> <laughs> my yeah. father always told me that always asked me my father always asked me that, hey did you put any sugar in this coffee no, no sugar <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> that's great when people yeah. say that. that's, that's great how street people say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just going to answer some questions on the, on the chat room um, Eric's okay. asking um, where can he find the, um, the, the slider uh, for the steaming I think he's because you've only just got your D1 Eric um, you need to update it to at least the beta version, uh, and then you will find it at the bottom. Uh, but if you can't wait now, you can actually go into the settings uh, machine and calibrate and, and change it there. It's just that you can't change it real time for now. So uh, I suggest grab a coffee, make yourself a coffee first before you update, because the firmware will take <laughs> anywhere between half an hour to an hour. Uh, yeah, make an you, hour make yourself say. a coffee first before you do it. Uh, and then, you know, once you've enjoyed it, then you can, you, you can go back to the one and start playing around with the flow rate. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. As, as I, me personally, I super enjoy this, uh, this uh, uh, real time controlling. Yeah. Super enjoy. I never try any machine with such. Yeah, I, I did try some machine with real time controlling on the bar pressure, but not yeah. the flow rate. Yeah. So it could be just slightly uh, weaker, but uh, the, the wetness of the steam is still the same. Mm. It's the same. Mm. Yeah. So um, I, I experienced some, uh, some of the, the, the Lama Zokos, you could change the ratio of steam and water in the, in the boilers. And, and oh, which that model is that? Yeah, uh, it was the it was an FB80, um, so quite an old model, um, just mm. before the GB5s came out. Um, yeah. But we did modify it heavily, so I don't know whether it was an additional add-on feature that we did in terms of PID mm. control. Um, but um, we we actually did a compromise where we because the bar was so fast paced, um, we couldn't um, we you know eighty percent was milk drinks you know. So mm -hmm. we had to make sure that the mill production was super fast. Um, so mm -hmm. it was compromised. And, and it just reminded me when you sort of saying how the milk separated so quickly. Um, mm -hmm. And that was by, by choice um, because mm -hmm. the pace was so fast that, you know, it didn't matter that it was separating so quickly because they were pouring it mm -hmm. almost immediately mm -hmm. after steaming. So, you know, that is, um, I guess, one situation where you might want a uh, wetter steam if production mm -hmm. is is key uh, mm -hmm. and you don't mind, you know, uh, having your baristas making it very quickly and, and mm -hmm. separating. Uh, but we were using mm -hmm. spoons and, and multiple pouring. So it was a little bit different mm -hmm. scenario. Um, but yeah, coming to this this feature on the D1 in, in being able to manipulate your flow rate is is mm -hmm. is incredible, right? It's it's yeah. almost Agreed. like your a little bit of an extreme example, but it's almost like the pro, uh, the profiles on the DE1. It's like now you mm -hmm. can kind of do that with the flow rate on the on the steam, uh, mm -hmm. and you know it's we're only really just finding out what the benefits are, and and it's pretty cool. I mean, the closest model that I've touched that uh, I've used before is Spirits. Mm. Kiss when they were Yeah. Kiss when they were um, it's that model. I think around it's right now it's priced around twenty thousand USD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which uh, real time of pressure control on the steam. Uh huh. But pressure control, uh, not the dryness control. Right. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's basically it's steam a bit softer when you you know tune down a little bit. It, the the wetness still the same. Condensation still the same. Interesting. You know? So I, yeah, I so. um I'm guessing now that the higher pressure you had, uh, the faster the milk heated up. Um, I yes. don't know if you found that. Uh, yes, um, that's right. correct. Like, uh, yeah. so cool. Wow, wow. So if I tune up to the maximum, it could just six seconds Ooh. for a 170 mil milk. Yeah, <laughs> that's, observing that's yeah. six really seconds. Yeah, That's so really I, I will I still prefer over over the years of experience, I still prefer at eight to twelve seconds. Uh-huh. I still prefer that. Yeah. Twelve right. seconds ring is just nice. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. less than that, oh I feel so pressure. It's very mm -hmm. pressure and once you messed up, it's messed up. 
it's very hard to have contingency plan for the milk steaming. Yeah. You know? yeah. So yeah, when during a lot of orders coming in, so that, that's, that's uh, very messed up as well. Yeah, we yeah. Might need to I mean, redo. yeah. You, 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 you know, when you're in the flow and, you know, you, you, you're used to that chirping and, and, you know, you get into that muscle memory, right? It, it's that, mm. and that amount of time is just good enough for you to kind of be prepared for everything yeah. and, and things like that. Yeah. Uh, but I, 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 was still, I was still emphasize on no matter how well you do at home, um, but then uh, by the time you have 10 orders waiting for you, you have people queuing up, the difference, the feeling is different. <laughs> no matter how fluent you do at home, yeah. but by placing you at the coffee bar, real scenario, with 10 orders and uh, 10 people queuing up, it's different. I tell you, it's back to the beginners level. It's, it's very true. Um, yeah. I, I've, been, I've, I've met some fantastic baristas in my time, and, um, mm -hmm. but they couldn't do a rush hour. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, it's, 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 some people just can't handle the pressure. Uh, yeah. um, and uh, yeah, and some people just embrace it. It's just if you yeah. do it, you can you can get trained into it, uh, but it just takes some time. Um, yeah. Have yeah. to get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is when we you pair people up and you hear singing or or, yeah. or no no noise at all. You know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it, this scenario is very the same. I would emphasize on when you have uh, gathering with your friends, when every day you're just making a cup of coffee for yourself. When there is a time they're gathering. Suddenly we have 15, we have 12 person, 12 guests coming into your home and then waiting for your coffee. The feeling is different. Yeah. Right? Everyone is like, oh, where's my coffee? Where's my coffee? Dennis, where's my coffee? The feeling is different. The pressure is there. Yeah. The flow <laughs> would be just different. It is okay? indeed. It is. <laughs> um, so Eric's asking a question. Um, basically, yeah. we extend the swirling phase uh, by lowering the steam flow rate. Uh, before yes. we reach the target temperature, right? And that is yes. correct. Yeah. Mm, um, yeah. So, so we, we, we're emphasizing the swirling phase um, because we, we, we were under the consensus that that's the time where the air that you've incorporated in, i.e. the larger mm. bubbles, um, gets broken down into the micro bubbles. So the more time you have to swirl and texturize your milk, um, mm. the more micro bubbles you will get. And basically you will uh, attain milk that will behave like you want it to behave as, as that is. Yes. Um, yes. So yes, so that's, that's the key area that we're focusing on. And um, so Dennis is basically showing a technique that is uh, letting you maximize that scenario. Um, and to be honest, I, I didn't really think about um, when I saw this feature, I was more about, okay, I'll set it to the lowest one and see what it's like. And I'll set it to the fastest mm -hmm. one to compare. And then I just really calibrated to what I found most comfortable with, with the amount of milk I was steaming. Um, so that's how I found it most useful. And um, Dennis being the, the, the master milk person has, has brought, brought it to another level and um, has maximized and really sort of separated his, his, his sections of his milk steaming, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit mind blowing to be honest, Dennis, but you know, your, your mind is sort of thinking about how I can improve um, uh, uh, the, the most important section and, and how I can, you know, uh, maximize my success in the chirping um, and I think that's that's fantastic and it's really sort of uh, discovering what the DE1 can do and how you can really fine-tune it uh, so that's awesome um, I can see Jan he's got another question um, okay. I'm not sure if you mentioned it already but is there a maximum duration for good milk steaming uh, I'm on a pro 1.4 chose 0.8 of my flow rate steaming 150 uh, to 60 degrees in about 45 seconds. Um, is that an acceptable duration? Uh, texture is marshmallowy. Mm. Um, do you mean marshmallowy that is um, a lot of foam? I, I believe that's what he's saying. Yeah. I believe that's what he's saying. So he's, he's almost going to a cappuccino type foam, maybe a little bit yeah. more. I don't know. Uh, but mm. yeah. Uh, he's getting a marshmallow texture in around 45 seconds. Um, I would say that the 45 seconds at 0.8, uh, I would say your milk must be really cold uh, for a start. Um, personally, I'm, I'm doing around 35, 40 um, for are around. You, are you using D1 Pro? 
Yes, I am. Yes. No, no, actually, I'm using the XXL. So that's why the time oh. is extended. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. So actually, yes, um, because you are using a pro, that does sound about right. Uh, mm -hmm. because the motors are a little bit uh, less of a power and you're only using one steam heater. So yeah, I think that sounds about right, um, Jan. Um, and All right, thanks. Uh, yep. Um, I, I would say that there's no, there's no, um, there's no correct time, let's say 40 seconds, eight seconds or six seconds. It, it doesn't really matter to me, but it's more into the, the user preference. For me, most importantly, if you think that the milk is nice to drink, 40 seconds is worth the wait. Mm. Uh, I, I've used like a uh, review, 50 over seconds. It's, but still silky, right? Mm. Single pin hole, uh, small, tiny machine, almost 50 seconds. I'm tiring. I'm very tired <laughs> by holding, by holding, holding a picture is tiring enough for 50 over seconds. Uh, but that the taste, I would think the taste is nice. Um, texture is very silky. Uh, that's, that's I have to give uh, credit to review, even though it's 55 seconds plus minus. It's okay. It's nice to drink. As yeah, well. yeah. I've tested um, that before. But I think um, part of the success of that, I guess, is because of the time you you have to to to, to texturize your milk, and and I, I I guess what I'm alluding to is that the the more you've honed your skill on steaming milk, uh, potentially the faster you can steam it because you you understand the points that you need to do before you get a, a good milk. So uh, um, so it it kind of agrees with you in that it doesn't matter about the time as long as you've you've mm. let the right amount of air and and you yeah. keep the microphone. Um, mm. So so you know. Um, if it's marshmallowy and you are meant to be getting marshmallowy, it doesn't really matter about the time as long as the quality is there. Uh, yeah, this is nice. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's okay. So forty over seconds is nice. Uh, I try eight seconds. I try six seconds. Not my preference. Mm -hmm. Way too fast. Yeah, I messed up a lot of coffee. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I try fifty-five seconds. Okay. I would prefer 55 seconds, let's say in terms of pace and in yeah. terms of uh, uh, the steam, uh, uh, I mean, the overall user experience. I would prefer 55, 55 seconds rather than the six seconds mm. because I messed up so much. Like yeah. I would, I could mess up like two cups in 10. Yes, yes. Yeah. Either it's too much of uh, a foam or it's, uh, you know, it, uh, plays a wrong position of uh, the steam one in the mass order uh, scenario i mean i guess we could put it another way it's like you know would you would you rather do it in a quick time and having to 100 percent focused or you know in in you know give yourself a little bit more room and enjoy the whole process a little bit better um yeah. and and I, I i guess it also ties into how you want to make your coffee you know if you've not got enough time, I guess it's an option for you to can steam your milk yeah. in in, yeah. in twenty seconds faster. But you know whether that twenty seconds is really going to affect your you know your morning, it's not very likely. So, um, uh, it's 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 finding that compromise for yourself in in terms of if you get a great milk at the end of the time, you know it, you may as well spend that time because mm -hmm. over time, consistently wise, you will get better milk. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I used to hate, um, going to new machines and, 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 you know, you get an order for one drink, it's the smallest jug and you, you know, you, you already know that you, you, you're having to play catch up because you have to find your sweet spot and, and, you know, adjust to the mm -hmm. hardware. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's very, um, how to say, uh, okay. used to what you're used to. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we get used to it. Yeah, overall, it just we will get used to it. Whatever is too short or too long duration of uh, steam uh, duration. Yeah. yeah. So, um, shall I use a single pin hole? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please do. Yeah. Can Please I? do. Yeah. I, I'll just okay. Uh, full dis disclosure over here. <laughs> I've used. I've been using this single pin hole for less than ten times. Okay. <laughs> so I tried yesterday. I tried twice yesterday. I tried uh, twice yesterday. I, I think me too. Seems all right. I, I'm less than 10 times too. <laughs> yeah, seems all right. 
it seems all right. It's still workable, but I have to adjust the flow rate to the most lowest. Right. The lowest okay. zero point four. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. bear with me. I'll switch right now. I'm gonna change it in front of you all. Switch sure. to right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay, change it. Okay, change this, change this up. The side, put this back in. Okay, this single pinhole on FXL is super, super duper powerful. Okay, so this is it, single pinhole. Um, okay, let me pull a shot first, yeah? Just yeah, to show yeah. the skin yeah. quality, yeah? So that they all understand what, it, what I'm doing. I think I'm gonna pull a shot as well. Um, okay. And, um, I think what I will do is I'm just going to steam one at the lowest um, milliliters a second and then one at the fastest. And then, you know, we still got a bit of time so we can have a look at uh, how the milk quality lasts over time uh, and compare the two different um, uh, milliliters per second. How was the uh, Mid Autumn Festival, uh, Dennis? Was it good? Sorry? How was Mid Autumn Festival? How was Mooncake? Oh, you're okay. Was it good? Yeah, it's, uh, I, I believe you guys have the public holiday. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We don't have that. Oh, really? <laughs> we don't have that yet over here. <laughs> but we have uh, other holidays as well. Okay, let me use this. Okay, shall I? Yep. Okay. I'll let it steam faster. Okay, go back down. Yeah, it's around 24 seconds. Right. So overall, it's uh, I've been playing with 0 0.6, 0 0.8, mm -hmm. and then back to 0 0.4. Okay. All right. Still can be done. Yes. Um, it's it's the lowest. I've been using zero point six or zero point eight, and then uh, tune down lowest zero point four, I believe. Right, right. Because I I thought that uh, it, it's very powerful, but uh, it's not with milk. So yeah, it's still doable. Are you doing that as well? Yeah, so I'm just gonna do uh, um, one on, um, how to say, uh, I will do one at the lowest uh, MLs. So the lowest okay, setting, and then, and then we'll just let it okay. sit. Um, and then I'll also do one at the highest one. Uh, and we'll just okay. compare the two. Um, and we'll, we'll really sort of see, uh, we'll, we'll show to the users what we're talking about in terms of uh, the microphone quality and how it lasts in terms of presentation. Um, cause that was one of the things that, um, kind of really blew my mind and on what this feature could do for the, for your presentation wise. Um, you know, you, you, you've been familiar in the uh, cafe environment where 
you know, you've made a coffee and maybe it's not got sent for, you know, 30 seconds or a minute. And by the time it's got yeah. to the table, you know, it, the presentation is not as good as it was when it was made fresh. Um, yep. And we're, we're specifically talking about how the bubbles will, micro bubbles turn into bigger bubbles on the top of your coffee. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure everyone's seen it, you know, where they've got a coffee and they've taken a sip and, uh, you know, maybe had a look at the phone and by the time they've taken their second sip, um, the coffee sheen has sort of gone. Yes, and it, and it may look uh, a little bit better. Yeah, this is, yeah. that, this, that yeah, I think this fine. is 35 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I was fascinated to see how, how, how long the quality of the milk foam lasted um, as mm -hmm. compared to, you know, what we're, what we're used to seeing on, on other machines and, and previously as well. Um, because, you know, we, we, it wasn't as easy to change the feature. So it wasn't as easy to see the differences. Um, and, and being able to see that uh, difference in your cup is, is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm just gonna go to the fridge and, and grab some milk. So I'll be right back. Okay. okay. All right, everyone. How is everyone? Doing good? Okay, Believe Pro comes with single outlet, single pinhole, can fit three pinhole. Yeah, absolutely. So if you guys, uh, I, I would suggest you guys to give it a try on the triple pinhole. Yeah, this one. It's a slightly smaller diameter and uh, still better quality. But now, if you have the skill, if you know, uh, if you have the basic knowledge, if you have the basic stuff, it works as well. Just like how I showed you just now, it works as well. Yeah. Paul, what model is that? Is that a XL? Uh, it's the double XL. Yeah, double XL as well. Yeah, yeah cool. XL. Oh, yours is special with the uh, white color GHC. Yeah, so this was um, one of the earlier models that came out. And um, I think they were contemplating putting the wide dial on the uh, XXL versions. Um, okay. So this was one of the, I think one of the first batches that came out. Um, and I, I actually quite like the contrast. Um, I actually look at the, the other models now, all black, and I, I actually prefer the contrast that, that we see here. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to change like the pin the other okay. camera. Uh, okay, cool. Let's see. Okay. So this is just a regular uh, one and a half, one, one to one and a half shot. Um, let's see if we can get the camera in. So it's over here or over here? Okay. Yeah, it's over here, over here right now. Yeah. All right. So this was on the uh, least, um, how to say, slowest. the slowest setting, and it's okay. I mean, it's a little bit foamier than I wanted. Um, you can kind of see in this portion here where it's a little bit foamy, and I didn't sort of make my canvas, um, but it is pretty shiny, and uh, we can compare that in a moment to the uh, other ones. Uh, so the one at a higher, higher uh, flow rate. Um, the only thing is, um, um, I've got different cuts. How, 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 how long <laughs> is that? Like, how? What's the duration? Steam duration just now. And this one was for two, about twenty-eight 20, seconds, I would say. Twenty-eight two seconds, long. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, just under thirty. So you can say just under thirty. So that was at uh, point six on the steam. Okay, point six. Yeah. Yeah. So let's try it right now, 2.2. 2.2, mm -hmm. okay. So I just need to pull another shot. Okay. Um, another thing about the, the coffee I'm using is quite oily um, and the mm -hmm. creme was quite hard to, to blend in. <laughs> okay. So um, I've, I've had some shots that are, are 
I've almost not been able to break the crema. So is there any advice um, pouring onto uh, breaking off the crema? Um, um, did, you did, did, you store, did you store the coffee before you uh, start pouring in? Uh, yeah, I did. Yes, I did. Um, and and uh, I, I say this because even though I swirl, which I normally do, um, just noticed that there was this, this one pocket on top of my crema that, that, that just looked like um, um, a, a blob of oil. And okay. I don't know, it's most likely the coffee that I'm using. Um, so, I'm sure you've um, experienced this before yourself, um, but yeah. is, there, is there any technique that you would utilize uh, for these types of coffees that are more oily? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, what I'll do before I stir, I'll just knock the, the cup, knock off the, the, the clumps in the coffee, and then I stir. That's number one. Number two, you can just add just a little bit of milk, let's say 5 ml or 10 ml. And then you stir, stir uh, then only start pouring. Right. Yes. That will work. So yeah. Okay. But you have to take care of uh, the the separation in your milk picture. Right. So you have to be, be concerned and aware that uh, you have to do everything ASAP right after you steam the milk. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna take your advice here, and I'm going to put a little bit of milk in. Um, yeah, just five or ten ml, did you say? Yeah, just a little bit, tightly drop, just drop a little bit into okay. the milk, into the coffee, and swirl, swirl until it's brown, and then start doing latte art. Okay. Mm. Oh. There's a question over here that I saw just now. My D1 Pro comes with one hole. Wondering if should I try. A tree hole. Jen, yes, of course you should. Especially if you yes, love you <laughs> Yeah. 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 If you like latte art, I think tree holes is the way to go. Uh, like I say, if you let's say, but do not, do not, do not think that um, whatever you have steaming problem, you think that um, uh, tree hole will solve all the problems that you have. It's not right, but it's improved. Um, it will improve, but it's not meant for to solve all the problems, steaming techniques that you have. It's more on the improvement on the, the steaming quality. Yeah. Like just how I, how I showed to you guys, a uh, single hole will do a very good job as well, but uh, three holes will do way much better. Yeah. But bear in your mind, three holes is not here to solve all your steaming technique problems. Just bear in your mind on that, yeah. Um, um, have you noticed any difference in terms of uh, pressure, Dennis, in, 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 um, oh. in, in the hole? Yeah, in the single hole to the uh, oh. three holes? Like, yeah. Um, single hole, in terms of quality, I barely can uh, uh, compare. Mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, the steaming quality, the gen the gen the genliness of uh, I'll record that the genliness of uh, uh, the steam power. I think three holes still um, works better. I still I still think that it's much more comfortable to work with uh, with three hole. Um, single hole get job done, but then three holes is easier and it's more comfortable for me to work with. Um, personally, I find that the three hole has um, how to say. Um, mm -hmm. it helps the swirl. Yeah. And, um, and I think that's, that's the key here. It's like, uh, uh, it's what we, we keep harping on about is, is mm -hmm. if you have a good swirl, it's going to be good to mm -hmm. texturize your milk. Um, I and, and, and I think that's what we're really trying to focus on, right? It's, it's finding that, um, technique that will maximize that time. Um, and to really sort of uh, increase the amount of microfoams that you have, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're gonna so knock the cup. The, the, you're knock the cup, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the other cup is at work, so um, so we'll do it this Let's one. Try. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot thinner foam here this time. Um, and I think that was because I was trying to 
uh, how to say. Um, I think it's nice though, the steam quality. <laughs> My camera got in the way there, so I, I, I've kind of gone a it's bit. It's okay. But it's okay. I think it's, it's, it's still silky. It's still it's very shiny over here. Yeah. Shiny. Um, I would say it incorporated less foam this time around, um, even though mm. the chirping sound was about the same. So this is interesting. Mm. I don't know whether that's because of the flow rate or whether actual my actual technique. So, mm. um, but we can kind of see that the other one is still okay, um, but it's not as shiny there. anymore. And we've got mm. some bubbles around the outside. Um, mm, yeah, it's okay. In terms yeah. of the foam, it's still there. It's starting to become matted and not as high definition. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, if we compare it to this one, which is just being poured, um, yeah, it's 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 still shiny and it's still got the uh, uh, sheen. Now I'm, yeah. I've just noticed how, how many seconds that um, the the other one or the newer one actually um, newer because one. I had a little bit more milk. It was just over thirty, mm -hmm. so it should have been quicker. But because I knew the cup was bigger, I used a little bit more milk. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. But what I'm noticing now, Dennis, is that even though I said it was slightly less foam, um, I think it's mm -hmm. because it hadn't had time to separate out yet. So mm -hmm. actually, I'm moving this cup now, and it kind of looks like I've got enough foam in here um, for mm -hmm. a latte. Um, but in terms of how it was different for the other one, it was um, I noticed it started to um, immediately see my foam mm -hmm. straight away. Um, mm. But whereas with the higher flow rate, it was much more liquid like. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know whether that confirms with what you've discovered as well. Uh, but it's, it's, it's first time I've really sort of uh, done that side by side and, and seen the quality of the milk difference. Um, so, yeah, that I, I, to be honest, I can't really tell any difference between the, the 2.2 and the 0 0.6. Mm. Uh, yeah, uh, because it, you're comparing with a bigger size of cup and uh, with a smaller size yes. of cup, right? Um, I could see if I've got another one or this one in the house um, to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, should I go have a look and, and do the same comparison, Dennis? Yeah, of course you can. Okay. I forgot to ask Paul what kind of cup size is that on the second cup, so I'll ask him. So do you guys have any question for me? And uh, I hope you guys understand the Three Brothers uh, definition of foam, right? And there is, and they are another tiny Three Brothers, <laughs> right, Paul? Yes. Is there tiny Three Brothers? There's tiny Three Brothers, like uh, yeah. the Portado, the Piccolo Latte. Piccolo. And uh, Gibraltar. And the Gibraltar. So I yeah, think uh, the Gibraltar is the smallest one, right? Am I correct? Um, I, I don't really know because Gibraltar, they always use Gibraltar glass. Yes, yeah. They always serve in a Gibraltar glass. Uh, I think it's around 3.5 ounce to 4 ounce. Around that size. Uh -huh. um... So for... For cortado and piccolo latte, it's around four to I think four to four point five pounds. But basically, it's very the same. Yeah, I would say a piccolo is about four to you know anywhere yeah. to five and a half even I've seen. Um, okay, let me answer some questions over here. Okay, how do you change the steam flow flow rate real time so easily? Ah, practice. <laughs> okay. He, um, he was telling that uh, he got spilled. Ryan got spilled everywhere. So oh, I oh, only oh. change the steam flow when it's swirling. That means it's stabilized and it's not chirping anymore. So that's the time. That's the correct time. You tune down um, lower or lowest if you want to. Uh, I don't think that, that that time will have any spillage unless you're using a way smaller uh, or you fill up too much of milk or way smaller pitcher. Whatever I showed you just now, it was uh, 400 ml of small pitcher and with 170 ml of uh, milk. So it's just nice for me to steam a uh, um, six ounce of cup. Yeah, so no problem for me. So most importantly is 
do not change the flow rate while it's chirping. Change the flow rate while swirling. Yeah. The only feedback I would say the real time flow is the Android control. Paul. Sorry, say that again. Yeah, many, yeah okay. Uh, the only feedback I would like to tell is the Android control. So most of the time when I try to lower down the real time flow rate, yeah. there's a back button and home button popping up. Uh, where, where you yeah, a, press? yeah, when I accidentally press or tap at the edge of the tablet, okay, the back button and the home button will show up. So oh. occasionally I'll just accidentally press on the uh, the home button. Right. Mm. Okay. So I've just pulled a shot, same shot, and the lovely D one has made me be able to copy the same shot, which is fantastic. And mm -hmm. I'm just going to go back to point six. Okay. And well, what's the size? What's the cup size for? for the cup the, size the is cup actually cup. about nine and a half ounces. Um, so, but I steam, oh, the joke, I'm actually steaming about eight ounces of milk. So I'm on the cusp of a um, little bit too much oh. milk. Uh, yeah. But um, because we're using a smaller flow rate and I just tried the fastest flow rate, I know I'm going to be okay. Um, so hopefully um, this will be, we'll be able to tell the difference a little bit better. And I'm um, steaming on 0.6, and uh, this is eight ounces of milk. Okay. And I'm noticing that because I've not got as much power, my swirl is struggling a little bit at the start because I've got so yeah. much in the um, jug. And mm -hmm. I'm kind of helping it along. And what I'm actually doing is I'm going very close to the top to ex to make my swirl accelerate as quick as I can. Um, as mm -hmm. compared to the faster flow rate, my steam one was submerged a lot more. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So we've just finished and the time is just over 35 seconds. So it did take a little bit longer compared to the first jug, but I would say it was round about the same, to be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I need you to fill out amount, about the same amount as the second cup, yeah? Sure. So it's about an in, a centimeter away from the top from the last one. Okay. And I would have poured more, uh, but I, I accidentally clipped the camera <laughs> above. Okay. So I'm just going to move the camera up a little bit more. Okay. Um, we will go again. So I've just swelled my jug. Hopefully you can see this. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's try. Mm, nice. So now pouring in these uh, cups is, is a little bit different compared to the wider cup. Um, but I would this, say this, that this cup is flat bottom, right? Yes, it's flat bottom. So yeah, you can kind of okay. see in the way it is uh, uh, swirled outwards from where I was pouring. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But you mean the ring? The drink? The, you mean the ring? You the can ring, see yeah. Visible ring, right? Visible oh, ring is because ring. you're you're moving your hand and the whole ring is just moving around. Yes. So yeah. there's a ring generated, yeah. So uh, I can't really tell any difference. Can no, not much difference. Uh, I was, not much, not much. Um, but the how, how many seconds is this? So this was thirty. How many seconds? seconds. Yeah, 30 thirty-five. Seconds. Yeah. Cool. So um. It's quite interesting. The second cup was uh, below 30 seconds, 28, 29? Yes, below 30 seconds. And that was the 2.2 oh, okay. flow rate. So yeah, probably just seven seconds difference. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Mm. So I'm going to drink There's this. a question. <laughs> if I make a mistake and I steam straight rather than on the side, and my steam one tip is too deep, can I still correct the whirlpool while steaming to get the milk texture? Yes, of course. Um, um, the steam duration is very important. So uh, like I said just now, um, the longer it is, of course, uh, you have to wait longer. But the good thing, the good side of it 
that you can uh, change. Um, if let's say you have any mistakes, uh, you do you did not hear you do not hear any chirping sound, you can immediately aware and you have enough time to correct the mistakes. That's our, what I would say. Yeah, of course you can change immediately. Coffee is nice. Yeah, so we're gonna get an angle so you can kind of see it as we keep on talking. Mm -hmm. um, you want to see the coffee I make just now, the latest coffee? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, uh, the texture is still here. Oh, it still looks fantastic. No bubbles around the outside. <laughs> yeah, this is around average like 0 0.6 to 0 0.4, I think. I was using the, the lowest flow rate. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, still okay. It still looks amazing. Uh, That's compare, been like uh, 20 minutes, right? It must be 20 minutes. I've made two coffee. Yeah. yeah, 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I think this is an hour already. Yeah, an these are right <laughs> yeah. But the coffee is not meant to sit there for an hour, right? No. It's meant to drink almost immediately. <clears throat> I'd say like 10, 20 minutes to finish a cup is... is yeah, I, I, and that's yeah, why I don't like larger cups of coffee, right? Because by the time yeah. you finished half of it, it's all, the other half is cold and it's not as enjoyable. Uh, yeah. Now, I don't know whether that's the luxury of me always being around an espresso machine and, and liking it fresh um, or whether it changes the taste of the coffee too. Um, but a bit of both, I guess. I, for me, I would just consume the whole cup of coffee like within five minutes or sometimes less than three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. The whole cup. Yeah. Milk or espresso or black. Oh. Whatever that is. Uh, yeah. Less than five to three minutes. Yeah. Hmm. That's very interesting. Uh, yeah. I don't, so even uh, I don't really like to. Yeah. So you don't like to mull over a cup for a little bit or. Uh, no, man, that's not my oh, style, man. Just, no, I, like, oh, okay. I, I like Italian style, you know what I mean? The yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> for for um, black coffees, like a uh, single espresso. Um, but when it comes to like an Americano, I, I, I don't mind to, to mull over a little bit. Um, and, and, and that's where I preference different drinks um, mm -hmm. to suit what, whatever situation I'm in. Um, mm -hmm. But like, uh, right now, yeah. Like right now, I, I, I consume like black coffee or Americano or, you know, espresso. I just, uh, I just leave it there for a minute. Mm. Then only I just start consuming like within three minutes or five minutes, I'm done. Finish the whole cup. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm, I like it that way. And so then I get the kick. Yeah. Well, there, that's true. That's true. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's if true. I, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> if I take a sip uh, five minutes later, I take another sip, you know, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get the kick. It's too empty in my brain, right? So <laughs> uh, I'm curious then is what's your, what's your morning routine with your, with your coffee? Um, our first cup is milk. Mm -hmm. and then second cup onwards is black. Right. Right. So your first cup is always milk. Yeah. First cup is always, but I, I'm fine with espresso. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. running out of milk, whatever. I just, if let's say I have a bad stomach today, I take black or straight. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine, yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's funny. I can't really take, uh, uh, I can take straight, I can take long black, I can take milk coffee, but I can't take matcha latte. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I, I have gastric, you know, it's oh, weird. Okay. I have this weird feeling. I have stomach upset, you know. Uh, it's a weird feeling. I can't really take matcha or tea. Ooh. I mean, matcha latte is weird to me. Yeah, that's true. It's true. Uh, I'm not yeah, too Chinese sure. tea, Chinese tea, um, whatever tea, I'm fine. But the matcha is something weird to me. Mm. Yeah. I, I never liked matcha till I found the sweet version. So, so there's a bitter version and a sweet version, right? Uh, and I, I never really got into it. I'm still not too keen on it, but now that I know that there's a sweet version, I, I kind of like it a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, very very interesting to find that out. I always like hmm. asking that question. What about you, Paul? What, what's your, what's your morning routine? What's your um, usually? My right. morning routine now is uh, I'll <laughs> I weigh out three to four shots, uh, mm -hmm. and then you know. Um, I weigh out three normally if I know if I've used the coffee before, uh, four if it's a new bean, 
Um, and uh, my first shot is really just for calibration. I just sip. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's good enough, I'll leave it to one side and milk it later, just not to waste the mm -hmm. coffee. Um, but my, my, I always want to get a good uh, shot of espresso uh, before I move on to my milk. So uh, those three shots is working towards getting that, that, that good espresso shot that I want. Um, mm. and so while that cools down, I'm steaming my milk. And then after I steam my milk, I neck that down <laughs> and, then, and then I pour my milk okay. in. I'm, I'm off to the computer. So, so that's, that's generally okay. my routine in the mornings, um, two to three I shots. See. That's I how I get my kick. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just one. I just I just I'll take one. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, uh, Paul. Uh, yeah. Do you have something to show us, like something new? Ah, uh, full disclosure. TGI Friday came. Can we show? Uh, a TGI Friday came too early last week, uh, yesterday, and I, I actually forgot to pick it up. But we can talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure we show it in another Zoom. Um, but um, I was meant to show you guys the new prototype Steam One today. Uh, but unfortunately, I, I actually forgot to take, pick it up from the factory. Um, mm -hmm. But we can talk about it. Uh, I showed Dennis um, briefly last week um, what it kind of looked like and, and things like that. And we discussed about it. And so essentially, um, we're, we're working on a new Steam tip and um and we wanted to show it today because we've we've put a lot of emphasis on texturizing the milk and and that section of the uh of the of the milk steaming process and what this steam tip does is it helps in the uh, swirling of your milk to really accelerate the milk uh, and as we've discussed, it, 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 this will help in uh, maximizing your microfoam that you will have in, in your coffees. So um, it's, 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 we're still testing it out. Um, and essentially, it, it's um, a three hole steam tip, uh, but two of the steam tips are uh, at an angle. So um, rather than spraying just directly out, they are actually um, redesigned to be at an angle. Yes, yes. And they're three in a row. Yeah. So one will go uh, towards the camera, the other one will go towards me. Okay, and then we have a single hole in the middle that helps with the aeration. So um, much like how we've discussed about, um, you know, it takes a, a moment of adjustment in, in using this theme one, you, you will find there's a little bit of adjustment, um, but um, the adjustment is, is just in sort of angles where you find your bite point. Uh, but as soon as you get into your swirl, you will find that um, it has a, a cleaving motion because of the angle of the steam is now uh, fl more flatter rather than rounded uh, ball of steam, okay? It's more flatter. So it, it actually splices more of the, your uh, bigger bubbles into micro bubbles. And um, so we can see right now in these two cups, okay? So um, this one being uh, the one with the lower flow rate, Okay, and this one was the highest one. So the one with the bigger bubble, okay. the highest one. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, so we can see this now, um, but with a little bit of testing in um, with the newer prototype Steam One, we're finding that most of the cups, no matter what flow rate we're doing, comes out like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and oh, we don't, that's good. Yeah, and we don't see as much bubbling appear as quickly. Uh, so this is um, obviously a working development, but is kind of uh, identifying um, areas we can improve to really match um, the features that we're putting out. So we've realized that, you know, sometimes the maximum flow rate, there is a bit of a compromise in terms of, um, uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, quality of the milk. Um, but where we can help with that is, is with these new designs of steam ones that will help with the, with the texturization more. Um, so it's kind of quite fascinating. Um, and, um, you know, I've made a few coffees for, for books and John and, and they, even they've kind of said that, you know, half an hour has passed and I, I, I and the, and the latte art is still there. Um, and it's pretty uh, phenomenal. Um, you know, just one piece of design can can help your milk uh, go go to the next level. Uh, and that's what I would say it is. It, it really is sort of making your milk more consistent. Uh, mm. 
Um, maybe not for the likes of you, Dennis, because your milk is fantastic. Um, every time I see mm. your milk, it's like, oh, I wish I could do milk like you uh, and pour as well as you can. Um, mm. And it's simply like the way you can repeat patterns and things like that, like literally making the milk <laughs> do what you want it to do. Um, yeah. it's, it's a real art form and it's a real pleasure to see. Uh, but hopefully this, this sort of new design will help us uh, get to uh, more of the, 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 the level that you are at, Dennis um and oh, um cool. yeah it's pretty exciting it's pretty exciting so um yeah. so yeah uh, well, hopefully I, yeah I this question right yeah how, how did, you, did this design come to materialize like how okay. did you guys like um come to design oh this placing by placing three pin holes one big in the middle two small in the angle mm -hmm. um how do you guys like come to uh, materialize such design that will improve the texture of the milk um, I think a lot of credit has to go to Ben, Ben Champion, uh, okay. one of our guys in, in Australia, and he helped design this steam tip, um, I believe with Fabrice as well, one of our um, um, engineers, and um, where this came about was we were really looking into trying to make milk steaming easier. Um, we all, you know, me and you, we know that it's a skin that can be honed and you need to keep on top of it in order to, to be able to execute, right? And, mm -hmm. and when um, Decent was uh, designing stuff with the ghost steaming and things like that, um, we can really see this help people there. Um, we are seeing a lot more people uh, asking about the ghost steaming. Um, one, um, we're seeing a lot more people who uh, may not have previous experience with coffee. Uh, maybe it's the, the, the partners of the people that have owned our, our, our decent espresso machines and wanting to learn more and do coffee themselves. Um, so we're trying to provide a, a, an avenue that, the, that these guys can get their hands dirty and, and get positive results from. Um, Go steaming, um, I would say, still has a little bit to work on in terms of um, it's hands-free. Um, to get the best out of it, you kind of do have to make a little bit of adjustment at the start. But once you've essentially got past the chirping motion, um, I would say the go steaming in terms of texturizing and swirling um, is already pretty good. Um, where this steam tip could help is um, in larger quantities of milk as well for people that may want to do two cups of coffee out of one. Um, but um, yeah, I think that's 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 mainly where this this project has come off from. Uh, but we're kind of seeing more benefits from it um, just from people who like to manually steam anyway. Um, and I think that's simply because it's, it's, it's like that um, uh, espresso is difficult video. Um, steaming milk is, is just as difficult as making espresso. Um, but, you know, it can be easy or as complicated as you make it. Um, but if you can provide things that will help you and get you on your way to learning uh, how to do it manually, I think we, you know, we're, we're stumbling on something here. Um, so, um, I like to use the notion that, you know, some people don't realize some things are better until they experience it themselves. Um, and, you know, we, I, I would say we're quite lucky in that we, we've been around people or we've learned the skill to really understand how to texturize milk and, and, and you know, understand that mouthfeel is also important uh, as well as that mm. delivering of flavor. Uh, but people mm. who have not experienced that really beautifully textured milk um may not understand you know they don't know any better right uh, so this is a, a, a an accessory that will hopefully you know get them more aware of what great milk is and 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 how fantastic it is to incorporate with milk um so so yeah um i think it's um mainly to to share the love of of milk-based drinks um and 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 i guess it's 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 for the people that are really sort of starting their journey uh and really well, getting into into these uh based drinks can't wait can't wait to get my hands on it <laughs> yeah um <laughs> i believe there's only 10 10 that were made Okay, uh, uh, but uh, we had two in the factory at the moment, so I'll see if I can speak to Fabrice or someone and, and see if we can get one shipped out to you, um, because I, I do want your opinion on it. Um, it is pretty, pretty good. Um, 
uh, and and yeah, I I I really like it. Um, after the first week, I wasn't so sure, but after I got used to it, it was um, yeah, I really really enjoy it. And and now I I move back to the one at home, and I'm like always oh, a little bit different. I've got to angle it a little bit more and, and you know, help my swirl. Uh, okay. Whereas, you know, uh, with the new one, uh, my, my jug is much straighter uh, rather than angled to the side. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's quite cool. Quite cool. That's to cool. Around with. Quite cool. I believe it's a good product then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you never know. It might change uh, a little bit more in the future. Um, we may... The end product. Uh, yeah, the end product, but I think the first positive signs on 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 the quality that we're getting out um, is, is really cool. So so yeah, some exciting right. things going on, and um, yeah, we'll we'll see if we can get one out to you, Dennis. We'll see if we can get one out to you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You get one for me. Then I'll make some video of it. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah for sure. Okay. So um, we can see these two coffees, right? Um. Oh yeah, big difference. This one big is difference. eight minutes before, but was on the highest flow rate. And this one is on the lowest flow rate. But um, even already the higher flow rate one, we, we can almost not see the crema in the bottom. Okay, it's, it's, it's really matted and it's almost like milk at the bottom. Um, if I use yeah. a spoon, if I can Probably. find a spoon. I've got a whisk, that'll do. Okay, um, there, there is no foam here. Okay, it's just mm. literally uh, moisture in the bottom. It's all dissolved. Um, so um, all the foam has pretty much disappeared. Um, hopefully this one in eight minutes will still have it all on, but you can kind of still differentiate the latte art on the top uh, and the crema is still there. So we'll come back to that in a, in a you know, eight more minutes and see how it is. Um, but I'm glad the concept came out there in the lower flow rate last, it should last longer than the higher flow rate in terms mm -hmm. of presentation. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, That's so cool. Christian, oh, at least direct message. Oh, okay. Hang on. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Oh, someone uh, telling me about cups. Oh, I love cups, by the way. Um, <laughs> um, it, like, you know how you sort of match cups with sizes of drinks and a particular type of shot? Uh, so, you know, being from the industry of looking cups for cafes, um, we always try to find cups that we can go to the vermiscus on, i.e. all the way to the top, right? And to find mm. a, a cup that matches a particular recipe, um, to me, is very satisfying. Um, so sometimes you may find a favorite cup. Um, so do you have a favorite cup, Dennis? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, I, 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 my favorite cup is something that is not branded. It's handcrafted. Okay. And it's, uh, every single cup of it, although it's same batch, it looks different. It's a slightly a little bit different. The tall size and the, uh, you know, in terms of height and in terms of uh, diameter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, from Thailand. I, I don't really know who they are. Uh, okay. They make cups, fantastic cups. I love to have a shorter cup, big diameter. Ah, yes. Right. Yes. Six ounce. Let's say six ounce shorter cups, a big diameter. I love to pour cups like that. Mm hmm. So I can generate more lines, you know, for more yeah, lines on yeah. a big surface. Yeah, that's my favorite cup. So, but then uh, I don't really know what's the brand name. I don't have, um, I think right now, uh, I used to use Incasa. Mm, yes. Acme. Mm -hmm. uh, in this premise, I have, my favorite cup is Acme mm -hmm. because of its thickness and uh, the roundness of the, the cup itself. Yes, yes. So... So far, Acme is my favorite right now. Um, mm. I, I, I used um, a, a company called uh, ACF Cups for a long, long time. Um, mm -hmm. and it's a very, it's an Italian brand and I think they went bankrupt and they, I think they might've got bought by someone. I, I, for some reason, I think okay. it might have been associated with Acme, but I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the, but then after they got bought, the quality of the cups went down and I've not, not been able to find mm -hmm. them since. Um, so so mm -hmm. a ASF were the ones I was always looking out for, um, but they're getting a lot harder mm -hmm. and harder to find now. Um, and they last forever. Unless you drop them on the floor, 
Um, the, you never had chips in them or anything like that. The quality of them were amazing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's another thing I look for as well, how long they last. Because, um, you know, mm -hmm. you find a chip and you can't use it. Yeah, my, my, <laughs> my Acme has been using like seven years right now. Mm. So never have a chip, never crack, and uh, never drop, to be honest. Yeah, uh, yeah. Taking good care of it. Yeah. So, but in Casa, it cracks. Ah. Mine, mine in Casa, yeah, it cracks. Like over the time, five years past, it cracks right in the middle. Oh. But you still can drink. It's just ice. You know, you see some, uh, uh, some lines oh, only. Oh, like a hairline but crack? Yeah. Really, yeah, hairline crack. Yeah. You still can drink, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that's my feedback from Inkasa. I think I read something about it's it's the amount of times they, they put it back in the kiln. So, they you know, they put it in the oven to set. Um, I think it's something to do with mm -hmm. the amount of times they do it. Like, most people only do it one or two times. Um, the really hard cups, they go in mm -hmm. three, three, maybe four times. So, but obviously that increases mm -hmm. the cost, right? Because you, you're, you're increasing yeah. production. Yeah, consume more time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, all right. Anything else um, today? While we're on the subject of cups, um, so you like the wide ones, right? Um, so I guess yeah. you like the wide ones because of the patterns you can produce compared to the narrow ones. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's what um, I was experiencing with these cups. They're very tall, but not very wide. And mm -hmm. um, it could have been just my paw, but my heart wow. wasn't very sort of, wide um it was very small uh, i i still prefer pouring in a bowl cup um in compare with the flat bottom mm. uh, for example like tulip tulip cup yeah. uh, is my least favorite tulip cup the max i just do some tulip uh stacking tulip or heart shape mm -hmm. nothing fancy from tulip cup so i uh, i usually pour in the uh, bowl cup bowl type yeah, so uh, mm. the round bottom one. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Mm. Mm. And I usually find actually the larger cups as well are um, uh, my experience with drinking with them. I don't know if it's my perception um, of, mm -hmm. you know, whether my nose is in there and I can also smell while I'm drinking. Um, that, mm. that affects the way I'm experiencing the drink. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and I guess that ties in with pairing your cup with your with the type of drink you have. So like a latte will be in a glass rather than a mug um, and, and things like that. Um, you know, I've, I've tried something um, very special. Uh, I think there was like two years back. Uh, mm. I never been served an espresso with a plate, a with pottery the... plate, a handmade mm. pottery plate. Like a saucer? <laughs> Yeah, like a saucer. Uh, okay. It's like this. Let's say this is a ring, right? Let's say this yeah. is the plate, but with the bottom. Okay. Yeah. So the reason why they serve with that is because it rushed down into this area of your mouth. Oh. So you get, you get a better mouth feel. Yeah, so yeah, when yeah, you yeah. drink, just, you're just trying to take, take a sip. It yeah. feels like the whole liquid, the whole coffee is rushing down into the, oh. your mouth, this area. It kind of reminds me of those um, olden days where people were drinking out of uh, bowls and sauces, you know, the, the, the alcohol. Uh, yeah, rice yeah. wine, right? Yeah, like the rice wines, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. ah. Yeah, so they would serve with, uh, first of all, they like to serve their coffee chill. Mm. They don't like to serve their coffee uh, hot, especially espresso. They encourage to drink with uh, a wider uh, diameter so it cools down faster. Mm -hmm. so it's better taste experience so so it's almost immediately once the barista pull a shot serve to customer it's almost immediately chill oh. Oh. so i guess that's intentional, light roast. right that's intentional to give the drink at a specific yeah. temperature so they can taste yeah. the, the taste at that temperature that's fascinating uh, yeah especially they they pull a lighter roast uh, coffee beans with yes. a higher temperature let's say 97 98 uh -huh. So it needs to cool down faster for customer to consume. Wow. Mm. Now, now this is why I, 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 I like looking at um, how, what you're putting your drink into because it affects the way it's perceived. Um, mm. So we're, I, I guess we're talking about the, um, 
the olfactory system, the way you smell and the way you taste in your body. Um, it's called the olfactory system. Um, and your perception of, uh, let's take sweetness, for example, um, is a lot less at higher temperatures than it is at colder temperatures. Oh, no, sorry, it's the other way around. <laughs> at colder temperatures, your perception of sweeter is a lot less than at higher temperatures. Um, so, um, so I presume that that light roast coffee was super sweet. And in order to taste the other subtle things, we had to cool it down quicker in order to taste the uh, other things. Um, yes, that's the reason. Yeah. Um, mm. I guess another way to explain is like uh, when you have a hand brew and it doesn't really taste of much until it cools down and then it opens out and all these fruity flavors come out and things like that. So um, I, I guess it's along that, that line, um, mm. which is really cool. Especially when, when I consume, right? When I consume, my nose mm. is pointing at the base of the, the saucer. Yes, yeah. I can still smell the aroma of the espresso. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Like what you say just now. Yeah. So I think I would say this is a new, um, I don't want to say fashion, but I would say it's a, a new trend in terms of um, how we're trying to uh, get people to taste lighter roast coffees. Um, and, 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 it, and, and what I love about that, that little, um, the way that they're serving the coffee is that they're really sort of uh, focusing on the taste um and 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 you know making sure that you're not drinking it really hot and you're missing the taste and not tasting what they're mm. saying um so it's really yeah. sharing the, the the flavor profiles that is discovered in that coffee um mm. yeah i think that's fascinating that's really it's very thoughtful i would say yeah yeah very thoughtful yeah mm. cool all right so um is there any questions in regards to the milk steaming or the features involved? Um, I hope Eric has a, has some fun with the new features and his new DE1 that arrived very recently. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I think uh, he's learned something new as well in that um, we regularly do updates uh, decent uh, and you will find um, every month there'll probably be one or two updates. Um, you don't have to update them, uh, but if you want the latest features or the latest thing that we're trying out, um, you would have to go to the nightly or the beta version. Um, they have a chance to be a little bit less stable because they're, they're, they're literally just being released and we release them as nightly so we can test them out before we move it to beta and then beta moves to stable. Um, but, you know, if you, you, you have that reassurance that if anything uh, does bug out or is not functioning properly, you can revert it back to the stable version um, or contact us uh, to see if, you know, we can troubleshoot with you and um, we'll get you back on your feet. But um, updates, updates, updates is always important with Decent, and especially if you, you want the latest features. And um, I would say the Steam Flow feature recently came out a few months ago uh, and is one of our, uh, it's, it's amazing actually. And in fact, the last two uh, features we put out, the Limit Flow, I thought that, that helped a lot of newbies um in terms of making sure that their shot was at least acceptable and uh and the new flow rate uh, calibration flow rate in terms of uh your milk steam um and also the calibration flow rate uh for the test uh with the, with the puck sims um so almost almost a little bit too much to kind of put into <laughs> into five minutes but um uh yeah you you will find that um we we do try to improve a lot and um uh, if we do see a problem we, we do put resources into into try and uh, sort them out so uh welcome to decent eric and um i hope you enjoy your journey and um i think uh, there's not really many questions coming out now so i think we'll look to uh, tie this up dennis and um, Ryan's just said, I made a quick observation today, set the seam temp lower to match a slower flow. I think I saw John post about something about this, but the temperature is still reads uh, quite high, i.e. set to 140, but the steam temp is still 160. Any thoughts? Um, I think if you're going from a higher temperature, 
to a lower temperature. Um, it will take a little bit of time for the steam heater to obviously cool down itself. Um, but um, in terms of um, uh, accuracy, you may have to look into also calibrating your machine to your power. Um, this will help in terms of ensuring that your pumps and heaters are, um, uh, uh, are working with the, uh, the electricity supply that you're receiving. And um, uh, what you can do is if you don't have the puck sims that in your possession, um, you can just create a profile uh, to run at a, a 5 ml per second for 200 uh, mls and uh, it uh, and time it for, uh, I think, I believe it is 60 seconds. So basically you should have 200 mLs within that time. If not, um, you can go into your calibrations menu and uh, re calibrate your flow um, to, to match that uh, output in that time. Um, if you're a little bit confused and um, you can just uh, have a search on the um, uh, diaspora manual, uh, and search for flow calibration, um, uh, flow test calibration, and you should be able to find it there. Um, if not, um, send us an email directly or any of the social media and we'll, we'll get back to you as well. All right. Yep. Um, just so people, if people don't know, um, when I'm talking about flow rate and calibrating it to your power, um, obviously we do calibrate each and every machine in our factory, um, but where the um, calibration may not map in your premises is that, um, let's say for example, you have an old building um, or you're very far away from your electricity supply plant, um, the power you will receive in your home will be slightly less um, either because the, the cables in your house are older and not as efficient um, um, taking on a current um, or the distance between you and the power station is quite far. So the, the, there is a little bit of loss of power traveling over that distance. Um, so we've identified this problem and, and, and created a calibration uh, in terms of flow. And this will um, essentially make your uh, decent app uh, calibrate your pumps to the electricity supply you have. Um, uh, black and white, I could just say, if your home's receiving more power, your your pumps will be really, really efficient, and you'll see like your flow rates go above eight milliliters a second. Mm -hmm. um, if it is not as efficient, you may see your flow rates uh, anywhere between six to seven. Um, not that it will make much of a difference in your cup, but in terms of accuracy, in term uh, like if you're using a Bluetooth scale, for example, your accuracy won't be as accurate as if you calibrated it. Um, so it is in your best interest to calibrate if your consistency is, uh, is key for you. Um, oh, thank you, Christian. That's great. Um, Christian's just posted up the uh, manual page for the flow calibration multiplier. And um, I have found it very useful uh, myself, even in different parts of the studio where we, we have different machines, the power is a little bit different. So I have been calibrating them and um, you just notice the consistency just get bang on every time. Um, so I don't know whether you've done that, Dennis, have you calibrated your machine? Uh, in uh, no. There you are? Okay. No, um, <clears throat> I have not. Do I have you... not in, in fact, I have not diagnosed yet. Okay, okay. Um, if you don't use a Bluetooth scale, you probably won't notice it as much. Um, uh, I use Bluetooth scale. So you have the brown line and the Bluetooth blue scale. line? Yeah, brown line and blue yeah, line. Right? Yeah. So yes. if, the, if your brown line is not tracing your blue line very closely, um, you can basically do a, a calibration. And um, I don't have my scale connected at the moment, so I can't, can't show you in the graph. But if it is uh, below your flow rate, um, you can essentially increase your flow rate calibration to match the output um, that you're, you're, you're seeing in the cup. Uh, and okay. the goal is that your output matches the input going in. Um, okay. So if your power is less, then it's a possibility that the coffee coming out will be a little bit less, so maybe 5 mLs less uh, consistently. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if you're, if you're really pushing those, you know, um, stopping it at a certain ratio, 
it, it you, you you can really benefit from uh, from looking into the calibration. I see. Uh, yeah, maybe we oh, can do sorry, one to there. calibrate your machine one time, Dennis. We can do a topic on yeah. calibration, and we can do that. Um, cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, it really helps with the pre-infusion as well. Um, when you come to fine tune your pre-infusion, um, mm -hmm. like I've been really looking at. Um, like the time I've been pre-infusing for, and I've been experimenting with really short pre-infusions, like three or four seconds, um, but trying to match my dose with my uh, flow rate going in. Uh, I'm going pretty deep here, but I'm just I'm just letting you know what I what I, what I've been experimenting okay. with. And after I calibrated, um, I found that the accuracy of my uh, pre-infusion was much higher, uh, and this was visually seen on the bottom of my porta filters. Um, so what I was actually doing was I was trying to match the flow rate that I was used to seeing visually, uh, without data, uh, and creating a profile that, that matched that flow rate. And, um, I was quite surprised in seeing it was a, it was one and a half ending in three. Uh, and I used to mm -hmm. aim for these flow rates on a, on a three to nine bar traditional machine. Um, so I was very surprised to see that that pace of flow rate coming out. Um, but I wouldn't have been able to do it if I didn't do the the, the calibration. Um, I would have been I would have wasted a lot of coffee and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, wouldn't have so such good results. The, 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 <clears throat> so the number one thing I need to notice is just the brown line is matching the blue line. Yeah, yeah. So that's how so, we tell that whether the machine is required to calibrate. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, so I have this question, right? Does this kind of thing applies to other traditional machine like boiler machines? Uh, let's say the current incoming current is under power, the pump is like uh -huh. less powerful. Uh -huh. Is that or is just specifically for decent to have this? Um, I think it would affect the uh, yeah. rotary pumps to a certain extent. Um, how, how I would see it in uh, uh, extreme scenario, let's say you have a, a low pressure pipeline uh, yeah. in your premises, so like less than one bar, okay? Yeah. So already there's no head start for the rotary pump to, to turn on. And mm -hmm. uh, in theory, it would have to work harder and use the maximum amount of current to generate. Um, as compared to, let's say you have a three bar uh, water mains, um, I would say that the three bar water main one would be a lot more efficient. Um, and if you compare that to, let's say you have the same system and moved it to a different location, uh, and then all of a sudden you've got a one bar, uh, but you're noticing your, your pumps are uh, uh, slow. slow, yes. Yeah. Um, you will notice that um, they will die a lot quicker. You'll have to change them a lot more because they're working harder. Um, mm -hmm. But how that ties into the D1 in that um, the D1 uses the pumps to calculate how much water is going in the group head. So um, we don't use a flow meter anymore. Um, mm -hmm. We used to, uh, but now we find the true data, i.e. the true data being how much water is pumped with each pump of the vibe pumps. So mm -hmm. um, every time it goes tuk, right? So if I go tuk, mm -hmm. tuk, tuk, that's four pumps of the, the, the vibe pump. And uh, we can accurately presume that each pump has, let's say, uh, hypothetically, 10 milliliters of water. If it pumps four times, it will be 40 mLs. Um, and we found that we can calculate uh, with the app um, the water going into the group head a lot more accurately than a flow meter. Um, but if, let's say, um, your electricity is not as efficient, um, that means that the uh, pumps won't be um, as responsive. So, um, and that had, leads to a chance of um, more, more chances of error in terms of how much it is pumping. Um, so if we recalibrate it, um, we, we can recalibrate it so that those errors aren't as significant and we can be more accurate. Um, so that's essentially it really. It's, it's kind of, um, not, it's not that the pumps aren't doing its job, it's that the pumps aren't um, doing as they're expected. Um, so we, we retune it to, to the new expectation of the pump. Um, okay. Yeah, so we can say it like <clears throat> Understand. Yeah. All right. So, cool. Um, we are 
almost to the end right now. Yeah, yeah. Two oh, um, should we finish it on looking at this? Okay. Yeah. So I think it went past the eight minutes quite a long time, but actually I still have foam on the top a little bit. In I the still can see something yeah. over there. So I've just ruined it now, but you can kind of see the foam is still a little island in the middle. Um, but this one, there is no foam at all. Okay. So I think it's pretty safe to say that the lower flow rate um, is as it's expected in that it incorporates less uh, water and mm -hmm. therefore the milk is more concentrated and the microfoam is more uh, concentrated as well and it lasts longer. And for the higher flow rate, obviously there's more water, less microfoams and the foam doesn't last mm -hmm. as long. Um, we also discussed that uh, the higher flow rates, we have to pour much quicker as compared to the lower flow rates ones. And that is due to the separation of the milk. And um, we've also discussed about the types of cups, how they affect your pour. And uh, Dennis's ingenious um, changing of the flow rate to maximize success in each of the uh, steaming phases. So i.e. a faster flow rate for the chirping to get the speed up and then a lower flow rate to gain the dry steam uh, and, and, and making sure it's as creamy as possible. And um, I would say from the, 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 the cup that the last cup that you did, the, the foam quality was really good. Obviously it had a great sheen and the latte art lasted well beyond 15, 20 minutes. Um, I don't know what it looks like now, but it probably won't um, be as nice. It's, it's as gone. Well, but it's, it's gone. 40 minutes right now. Exactly. It's 40 gone. minutes. Um, so, you know, 15 to 20 minutes and the latte art is still great, um, is, is already phenomenal. So, you know, you, you're already lasting beyond, um, beyond how long the coffee should be sitting there anyway. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All right, Dennis. Um, always a pleasure. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Um, we had some pretty good interaction this time and we had a lot of discussion. Uh, it's really great to see. Uh, I'm seeing the interaction becoming more and more. So hopefully we'll see you next good. time. Uh, I'll, I'll have a chat with you uh, earlier on this week, Dennis. But um, apart from that, enjoy your Saturday and enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. And uh, see, you guys. We'll see you soon. Peace. Bye. Bye-bye.